Once upon a dream, I met her long ago, but somehow I can't forget her. I met her once upon a dream. I'm sorry, Mr. Owen. Our Rita can't mind the baby today. She's badly. We had to get doctor to her last night. I'm very sorry. Well, thanks for letting us know, Joseph. Any sign of Rowan this morning? On his way, Sarge. He's still engaged. Well, we'd better tip him off. I'm due over that road anyway. I'll call in. Cover for us, will you? By saying what? Use your loaf. Morning. Oh, hello. I was passing, so I thought I'd just pop in. See how you were coping? Hello. After all, at six weeks old, most men wouldn't even know where to start. More needs must, eh? Quite. So, uh. Is there anything I can do for you? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Positive. Right. Um, well, in, in that case, I'll leave you to it. If there is anything I can do to help, you know where to find me. We're not going to let her think we can't cope, are we? All right, I'm coming. What do you want? If you're a Jehovah's Witness, I'm beyond redemption, so you can bog off. Don't be like that, Uncle. You are. Don't you recognise me, then? Well, should I? It's Norman, Uncle Claude. Norman? What, you, you don't mean little Norman? 
Oh, yeah, do shut up. What you been standing in? Last time I saw you, you were no better higher than a cricket stump. Well, here, you better come in. Mind you, it's not very tidy. Mum, it's me. Any chance you could come back up and give me a hand for a couple of weeks? You can't get any time off. I wouldn't ask if I wasn't desperate, you know that. Thanks, Mum. You will ring me back. Johnny, mate. Oh, hello, Alf. Uh, it's Nibs has been after you for the past hour. Well, I've had my eyes full since about midnight last night. Well, she'll soon settle down. Probably when she's about three. Oh, thanks, Alf. Uh, Rita's been sick. I'm stuck for a babysitter. Well, uh, I could watch your phone for you for an hour. That'll help. Oh, thanks, Alf. Mm. Hey. No oh, problem, is it? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be coming out, Alf. Hey. I want to report an attempted murder of Oscar here. Oh, man's a raving maniac. He could have killed him. Yeah, all right, if you just try and calm down a bit, Mr. Dewhurst, we'll take a few details. His name's Barker. Oliver Barker. He lives next door. And it was an air rifle he used, was it? Well, see, check his like. It were a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, I see. <laughs> and he could live at the end of the cat, did he? I don't know how he missed, Oscar. Well, all right, um, I'll have a word with him. Oh, all right. We'll be in touch. So. Well, 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 old Tucker Barker. He's a bit of a headbanger. Would you fancy a ride out there, then? I tell you what. Why don't you leave her with me? I'll look after her. You go. Do you good to get out of the house for a bit. <laughs> Mr. Barker? That's right. PC Rowan, Aidensville Police. Do you own a 2 2 rifle? Aye. Do you have a firearm certificate for it? Uh, yes. Here, yeah, well, can I see it, please? Uh, so you're not denying that you used the rifle to take a pot shot at your neighbour's cat? Of course not. But nobody were more upset than I were when I realised it were beefies, Moggy. I thought it were a rat, you see. Beefy, sir. That's my nickname for him. Little Dewhurst next door. Beefy. It's good, eh? I must be honest, you're the first relative I've had up here in years. Well, uh, I couldn't be this close and not. I mean, uh, my dad would have gone ape. <laughs> really? Well, that's a bit surprising, because the last time I saw him, we went all sweetness and light, you know. In fact, we weren't even talking when you all went to Keswick. Come on, son. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, there. Uh... It was my dad who asked us to pop in. Was it? Well, if he's told you to ask me for that money I'm supposed to owe him, you can tell him he's got more chance of being struck by lightning. He's not bothered about the money anymore. Is he? Ah, what's a couple of hundred quid to me dad? He's coining it in since he got into scrap metal. He's got his own rolls now, you know. Has he? Our little Cyril Isaiah. So, the way he sees it, uh, why have a family rift over a miserable couple of hundred quid? Life's too short, right? Right. Cheers. I know that, but what brought you up here in the first place? 
On the knocker. The knocker? Well, what sort of stuff are you selling? Ladies lingering, mostly. What, you mean thingies and doodars and what's it? There's a real good markup on that kind of thing, you know. Ah, not to mention the fringe benefits, like being able to meet female ladies of the opposite sex. That's what attracted me to the job in the first place, Uncle Claude. <laughs> play a lot of darts, do you? Not as much as I used to. Banned from the board at my local. Banned? Well, what for? I said I were too good, said I was spoiling it for everybody else. Look, he has got a certificate for that rifle, Mr Dewhurst. Now, I've warned him and I'd say it was pretty unlikely he'll pull a stunt like that again. I saw him deliberately shoot. This did happen in broad daylight, you know. Yeah, I know. Only, you don't know Tugger Barker, do you? You see, Norman, what you don't realise is, is that you have got a God-given talent. Do you think so? I do, that. <laughs> and of course, God gives out God-given talents for them to be exploited, doesn't he? For profit, which is where your Uncle Claude comes in, right? Right. It's amazing, you know. You women make it all look so easy. You sound like me dad. He's always saying things like that. Well, he can tell his auntie just about anything. Yeah? Well, unless it's something he just doesn't fancy, like washing up, then all of a sudden he becomes completely cack-handed. There's all these chairs at home then, does he? And a couple of settees. Right, we ready? Here she goes. There you go. Oh, that's better. You had anything to eat yet today, Nick? No, I'm not really hungry. No, it's all right, thanks. I don't mind. Honestly, I'm all right. Look, you'd have to take more care of yourself, Nick. You've only for their sake. I know, I know. Come on, on. Yeah. So how are you managing? And I don't just mean with the baby. Oh, well, live one day at a time. Cos if you can do that... So that's what we're doing, isn't it? Taking it one day at a time. Did you have in mind? No, it's Bertha. Miss Airy Shelter, 1944. Something you wanted, was there? Besides a good idea. <laughs> uh, give, give the Scotch, give him half a bit. Of. Come on, Tom. Yeah. Now then, Wesley. Not a bad dark player, Wesley, in his day, like mine, a long time ago. Any time there wants 200 star for a five at Green Grass, just let me know. Ah, well, I must admit, I'm not the force I was myself, you know, since my eyes started to go a bit. That's the excuse now, is it? Ah, mind you, there's no wrong with my nephew's eyes, other than Norman. He can chuck a bit. Oh, aye. Right, Norm, you want 60. And double 10. And that'll do me. Who's a pretty boy? Thank you, Wesley. That'll just cost you a pound. Double or quits? Uh, I'd like to, but unfortunately, we've uh, we've got an appointment in Aidensfield. I want a chance to win my money back in Greengrass. Oh, well, if, if you'd like a, a proper match, you know, for, like, uh, decent money. How oh, decent? How much can you afford to lose? 
All right, Uncle Claude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're brilliant. Stick with me, Norman. You'll finish up on champagne shandies. <laughs> Not like you are, Wesley. Getting beat by a snotty nose kid. You'll have to speculate to accumulate, Bertha. That's a lesson old Claude has never learned, is that? What? Never try kidding a kidder. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm just coming. Give me a minute, will you? Clayton's twittering on again about why you haven't turned up yet. Yeah. There you are, you see? That's all she wanted. Bit of an expert when it comes to babies, aren't you, Phil? Eldest of seven. What I don't know about Burns isn't worth knowing. Well, in that case, you'll be my guest. Hmm? All right. Yes. Yes. It's a bit warm. So Blayton's on the warpath, is he? Yeah, he's been called to division. What for? Well, it might be to do with you. Me? What do you mean? Well, if you carry on like, you know. See, with babies, Nick, you've either got it or you haven't. And you've got it, right? Oh, yeah. I can see where. What? Okay. Well, what have you done? Mr. Dewhurst, Barker's gone and done it again. I played rugby against Barker once. He's a right mean swine. He'd stomp on you soon as look at you. Well, why don't you go and have a word with him, then? Uh, I think you best do it, Nick. You've been familiar with the case. Babysitter's sick. Uh, well, no sweat. I'll look after Katie for you. you sure? Positive. She might need changing. Go on. <laughs> no. Listen, you know that report that Blayton asked you for this morning? Yeah. Well, he's not asking for it now, he's screaming for it. So if I were you, I'd get yourself down here and do it pronto before he gets back. Do it. Oh, great. Look, a stupid animal run right in front of me. What was I supposed to do? Swerve and cause an accident? Well, you could have stopped to see if it was injured. Well, it run off, didn't it? So the way I see it couldn't have been that badly injured. Well, Mr Dewhurst thinks you ran over his cat deliberately. Well, he would, wouldn't he? It's besotted with damn thing. In fact, I don't think it's healthy. Grown man being like that over a cat. I mean, a dog, yes. But a cat! <laughs> What's she doing here? Well, I've just arrested her for breaking and entering. Haven't I? Does Nick know you've got her? Of course he does. Who do you think left her with me? Only uh, he's not back yet, is he? <laughs> and I couldn't just leave you, could I? <laughs> so what are you planning to do with her, then? Well, uh, change her for a start. Not here, you're not. Well, where, then? Well, find somewhere. Preferably private. Come on, Katie. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. <laughs> you got a clean nappy? Uh, how do you know he did it deliberately if he didn't see anything? 
because I know him. That's how. Well, it's hardly grounds for prosecution, Mr Dewhurst. Well, surely you can do him for failing to report the accident. Well, legally, he doesn't have to. With a dog, yes, but not with a cat. That's outrageous. Well, I agree with you, but it's the law. So what's he got against this cat of yours, anyway? It isn't the cat, officer. It's me he's getting at. It's lots of the It was messy, wasn't it? Eh? Hey? Never mind, all done now. Allegedly in charge of this asylum. I beg your pardon, madam. And so you should. The way this poor child's being passed about. I'll be back, Sergeant. Lest you should wonder, Rowan, your daughter is in good hands. Where is she? The hands of Nurse Bolton, when last spotted. What's going on? That's what I would like to know. And more to the point, what our superiors at Division would like to know. Now, it's four weeks I've been covering for you. Now, I realise it's difficult. But you're going to have to make some permanent arrangement about this baby, otherwise your entire fitness to remain on this patch will come into question. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. I'll be off. I've just found your baby in a cell attached between Nick. Oh. At least she's safe. Oh, right as ninepence. Though heaven knows why, considering the way she's been passed around the parish like a, a, a parcel. <coughs> you know, this really can't go on, Nick. There's just no way a man in your position can look after a six-week-old baby and hold down a full-time job. So what do you suggest then, eh? Well, have you thought about fostering as a temporary measure? Yeah, yeah, I thought about it. But she happens to be my child and her place is here with me. It's hardly realistic for a working policeman. Now look, Mrs Bolton, 
I'm sure you mean well, but we've managed so far and we'll continue to manage. So however hard it gets, however inconvenient, she's staying here with me. Is that clear? And I should hope so too. Some sort of little problem, is there? No, nothing we can't handle. Not now you're in. Nice to see you, Mum. Good journey. Oh, I could murder a cup of tea. This matches up for money, I hope. It's against the law. Oh, don't talk, Daft George. It's just a bit of fun among the lads. Mm. Oh, all right. Why not? Go on, no, my son. <laughs> Where's the money going to come from? I mean, I can't put my hands on the kind of dosh you and Wesley were on about. It's not your hands as has got to have to, is it? It's mine. All your hands have got to worry about is chucking them arrows in the right direction, so get practising. Washed up in better than you get at King's Cross these days. I think I've killed him. Where's Barker now? In hospital, Sarge. As soon as he passed out, Dewhurst called an ambulance. He's still breathing, then, is he? Yeah, he'll have a pretty sore throat for a few days. Do we have any idea why this raving maniac should suddenly want to attack him? There's something about a woman, he said, Sarge. Right. I'll have a word. Well, Mr Dewhurst, there's obviously much more to you than meets the eye. You're not on anything, are you? Spinach, perhaps? What about my cat? I beg your pardon? He'll need feeding. You don't seem to realise the seriousness of your situation here, Mr. Dewest. The man you've just put into hospital could have died. You could be charged with attempted murder. But what about my cat? I'll see he gets fed, Mr. Dewhurst. Now go round to the hospital and find out if Barker is in any fit state to give you his side of the story. Bellamy, escort the Boston Strangler here into the interview room and watch him. Those tiny hands of his could be registered lethal weapons. Um, this way, Mr. Dewhurst. How are you feeling, Mr. Barker? How do you think? Will you feel up to giving me a statement? He tried to throttle me. There's nothing anyone I'll do to win when I get out of here. Well, that's not something I'd advise, taking the law into your own hands. So why did he do it? How do you mean? Well, Mr Dewhurst said that you were dragging some woman's name into it. Who would that be, then? How should I know? Well, you tell him you did nothing to provoke this attack? That's what I'm telling you, yeah. OK, Mr Barker, we'll leave it there for now. I want him charged, do you hear? That was attempted murder, that was. Yeah, we'll decide about that once our inquiries are completed, thank you. Nurse. Nurse! Hello. Sorry, you are? Dorothy Dewhurst. Colin's wife. Oh. Well, we're separated, actually. Have been for a few weeks now. I see. Is he in, then? Uh, in custody. Custody? What's he been charged with? 
Well, probably causing actual bodily harm. No, I, I just can't believe it. He, he wouldn't hurt a fly. All well, we've managed to get from him so far is that Mr Barker shouldn't have dragged her into it. Now, who would she be, do you think? Who? Oh, I'd better let you know what's been going on. Barker moved in next door. About six months ago, right? He seemed all right at first. Friendly enough, anyway. Well, I don't know. Perhaps he must have sensed it. Colin and I were going through a bit of a bad patch, and all of a sudden, he always seemed to be dropping in. Usually when Colin wasn't here. Would you like to come through? Yeah. Colin and I had this mother and father of a row, and uh, he ended up telling me that if I fancied Barker that much, I should move in with him. I uh, ran next door in tears. He offered me a shoulder. We uh, had a few drinks. And uh, one thing led to another, as they say. Well, you ended up staying the night? Yeah. Only it wasn't that much of a night. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, it was all a bit of a nightmare. He started making these disparaging remarks about Colin. Well, I wasn't having that, so... I ended up telling him a few home truths. Like how Colin was twice the man he was. And then? I, I came back here to try to make it up. Only Colin showed me the door. And who can blame him? So what now? He wants a divorce. Me? I'd be back like a shot if he'd have me. Now, this line is very popular. There's a lot of pink, though, isn't there? Well, it's the in colour this year, pink. Any messages, Gina? Yeah, it's just a couple. I'll look at those later. I thought you said this match was just a bit of fun, Claude. Not worrying, George. You know what these dark players are like. Show them aboard, they think it's the World Cup. You, you happy with all this, then? It'll do, I suppose. He's up to something, that one. Aye, but what, though? That's the $65,000 question. I can't tell you how pleased I was to see you walk through that door, man. Well, just as long as you realise the arrangement's strictly temporary. Well, how long can you stay? A couple of weeks, I expect. I mean, after all, I've got a living to earn. Besides, I've already devoted the best years of my life to bringing you up. So there's no way I'm going in for an action replay, especially up here. You never know, Mum. You might get to like it. Empty fields, Nick, are best seen through railway carriage windows. Of course, if you was to move back to London, well, things would be different, wouldn't they? I don't want to move back to London. Think of the advantages, though, love. I mean, for starters, there'd be plenty of family happy to help out. Why you ever came up here in the first place, I'll never know. Mum, Kate and I were happy here. Yeah, well, that was before. But it's not just yourself you've got to think about now, is it, love? Shop! Hello, Phil. Right. Want a cup of tea? Uh, I ain't got time, mate. So what happened with Mr Dewhurst then? Well, charged under Section 20 and released on bail in view of the fact that Barker's life wasn't exactly hanging by a thread. How are you, Mrs Rowan? Oh, overworked, underpaid. <laughs> you as well, eh? So you, Nick, have until exactly 7 o'clock to get your glad rags on. Why, what's happening at 7 o'clock? You're coming out with me now for a pint or two. Ah, oh, thanks, Phil, but I don't think so. 
You call for him, all right? He'll be ready. No, I won't, Mum. So force yourself, cos sooner or later you're going to have to, aren't you? Mum. Could you just excuse us for a minute? Yes, you... Um... <clears throat> Nicky. You're not the first to lose your other half, you know. When I got the news your dad's ship had gone down, I just kept hoping he'd come back. That he'd walk in one day and say, Get up them stairs, Ruby. Then, when it finally got through to me that he wouldn't come back, oh, I just went zombie. Till my mates come round and, and said, Come on then, Rube. You're coming out with us. Because you don't really believe this is what he would have wanted. Sitting here, moping your life away. And they were right, weren't they? Because life goes on, Nicky, doesn't it? It has to. So, are you going to get up them stairs and wash your face, or do I have to wash it for you? Seven o'clock, right? Right. Thanks, Bill. Just following orders. Whose orders? Last thing that Kate said to me. Well, what did Kate say? To keep an eye on you. Seven o'clock, right? You'd be able to manage on your own. What would I know about babies, eh? Sheltered life I've led. Where's my cat? Your wife's got him. What's she doing with him? Well, she didn't know whether you were going to be kept in overnight or not. Oh. I see. Here, before you go... It was something that Barker said about Dorothy, wasn't it, that started all this? I was in the garden. He started bragging about what a treat it must have been for her to have a real man for a change. And that's what he said, was it? Well, that's not the way I heard it. Oh. Right, Wesley. So it's 301 up. Best of 11 legs, 350 quid agreed. Get on. What's the game then, Claude? Well, 301 up, best of 11. You know what I mean? No gambling, we said. Yeah, I, I know that, but I'm afraid it's uh, it's caught the imagination of the public. Well, I want it calling off now. Yeah, well, you better call it off then, because I ain't going to. Oh, no, that's all we need. Well, 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 well. Right, Alf. If you want to get that purse out of yours, give the moths their annual treat. Mine's a pint. Yeah. Bit of a money match on, is there, George? No, just a bit of fun, really. Huh. Anybody we can have a bet on with? Sorry, I didn't break his neck. It wasn't that I meant. Oh. Real 
relax, will you? I, I promise to take her back a couple of bottles. Who? The baby? Me mum. Well, it's your round next, so won't you back here in five minutes, OK? Oh, we'll come looking for you. Right. Excuse me, could we have a bit of quiet, please? We happen to have a match going on here. All right, Wesley, you want 40? Yeah! yeah. Right. That's five games all. Final and deciding leg. Here you go, man. Bye, Nikki. Come on, Norman, you want seventy one? Can we have a bit of quiet, please? Come on, Norman, this is for the money. Oh. Sorry, Uncle Floyd. Oh, Wesley, you want 100? Sure, that first one's in. Oh. All right, all right. It is. Go on, fifty. What do you think? Well, wait there. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Right, let's just review the facts, shall we? An illicit darts match, where bets were being laid, and where three of Ashfordley's finest were also present. Namely, you lot. As a result of which we're unable to do a thing about it, being what you might call well and truly compromised. Only following your advice, Sarge. My advice, Ventress. That we should take Nick here out for a quiet pint. Oh, I see. So when we realised what was happening, we just thought we'd lie low for a bit. Then pounce. So that was the plan, was it? Well, at least we were on the spot when the trouble started. All right, you three. Just get out. Ah, oh, Mr. Barker. I'm glad I caught you. Oh? I just wanted to confirm that you still wish to proceed with the case. I want the book chucking at a little swine. That's what I want. Oh, fair enough. Just so long as you realise what it will look like when the papers get hold of it. What papers? We'll just think what a mill they're going to make of it. Seven stone weekly and putting someone like you in hospital. Then there's a steamy bit. You and Mrs. Dewhurst. What about Mrs. Dewhurst? Well, that's what all this has been about, isn't it? Your resentment at the way she put you down. How was it she put it again? You didn't exactly turn out to be like Errol Flynn on the night. But that's a lie! I'll believe you, Mr. Barker. But will the readers of the news of the world? Now, why would Barker suddenly want the charges dropped? Oh, I don't know, Sarge. Still, if nothing else, it saves us a load of paperwork, eh? 
Well, in that case, you best get yourself round to Dewhurst and break the happy news. And when you do, you can tell him from me the next time he's thinking of throttling anybody to think again. Right, Sarge. Oh, Sarge, I'm a bit lumbered this afternoon. Mum's gone to have her hair done. Excuse me, Sarge. Me, uh, I can't look after her for long. Haven't you in court in a minute? All right, mate. There we go. Come here, then. Yeah, okay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's that noise? Mr. Greengrass would like to have a word, Sarge. Don't say a word, Greengrass. Not one word. Ventress. happening to all that money your lot impounded last night? Well, we decided to hang on to that for a bit, Greengrass, until somebody comes forward to claim it. Mind you, whoever does, he'll be facing at least half a dozen offences, including aiding and abetting gambling on licensed premises. Oh, so that's your crack, is it? Why, well, you weren't thinking of claiming it, were you, Greengrass? Well, no, no just curious, that's all. Only, what if nobody claims it? Well, then we'd give it to some suitable police charity, won't we? Say the Widows and Orphans Fund. A certain poetic justice in that. Wouldn't you say so, Greengrass? And pick up that scabby nephew of yours, too, on the way out. No, uh, no hard feelings, like. I suppose blood's thicker than water. Right. In fact, I'm going to give you something I used to give your dad when he were a lad. Oh, I. Oh. <laughs> ah, a lunatic. Is that it, then? Yeah, if there's any trouble in the future, just leave it to us to sort out, all right? Right. And thanks again. Thanks for the call. Right, I'll leave you to it then. Once upon 